This is what a Superflex rookie draft looked like in 2020. As you can see here, some of these players didn't hit, right? You have guys here in the 9 to 11 range specifically where you've got Lamb, Herbert, and Jefferson, and it's ridiculous. But around them, you've got Jerry Judy, didn't hit. Jalen Rager, definitely didn't hit. Cam Akers, hit for a time. Swift, yeah, I mean... He did hit if you got out at the right time. JK got me. But <laughs> yeah. the point is, not all these guys hit. Let's look at 2021 CH. right now, right? Uh, yeah, I didn't even mention him. That's Second 2021, uh, Trey Lance, okay? Uh, all these guys here in the middle hit for a time. Zach Wilson didn't really hit. Uh, Javante Williams had some value, but ultimately hasn't really done much. Uh, Mac Jones didn't really hit. 2022 even. Like, this is not as recent, so or this is more recent, so we don't really know if these guys have technically hit yet, but we do know that Trey Burks. Hasn't hit and hasn't gotten close to hitting. JMO, not yet. Uh, Kenny Pickett, didn't hit. Sky Moore, hasn't hit yet, probably won't. So what's the point of this? The point is you're probably too, uh, I mean, th- not everybody, but I think there are a lot of you, especially some future value teams, maybe some hard rebuild teams that are over-invested in rookies in Dynasty. And what this means is you have so many rookies on your roster that you are inheriting an extra amount of risk when it comes to the hit rate of rookies, when in fact, what we like to do, and the word we like to use is diversify, what we like to do is diversify our assets into some safer, more proven assets, and we're going to tell you in this video why you should do that and how you should do that on your Dynasty teams if you find yourself having this issue with your roster construction. Yeah, so I definitely view this sort of strategy as as a timeline, because up until this point, if you're a hard rebuild team or a future value team and you've accumulated picks and accumulated value through the rookies that you've invested in, you've done everything the right way to this point, as long as you aren't, you know, buying those picks at their peak value. But let's go back nine months, right? You're in the middle of the fantasy football season. You're a team that just hasn't worked out in 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 your league and you end up being a bottom team and you're like, hey, I've got some contending assets. I'm going to ship them off. I'm going to go get future rookie picks. You end up acquiring those rookie picks in theory, right? And then once the season ends, what keeps happening? The value of those picks keep rising as we get closer and closer to the rookie draft and the, and the combine even in March and then the rookie draft ultimately at the end of April. So what do you do? You hold on to those picks. We told you felt like week after week that we were telling you guys, hold your rookie picks, do not sell them yet. And honestly, it might even still be worth investing in some of those later picks as well, because they haven't reached their peak value, even in the early, the early months of 2024. Now we are post rookie draft. Now we are at a point where a lot of the values of these young rookie assets have settled. Some of them maybe are slowly rising. A few of them are slowly falling, but I would definitely say there's a lot more risers than there are fallers. There are. And we are now, what are we now, two weeks away from the start of training camp? What do we know? I I can't wait for these videos. These are like my favorite videos once training camp starts. But what do we know about training camp? What, What happens during training camp? Hype videos. Hype articles. One handed catches from future Hall of Famers like Jamison Williams, from future Hall of Famers like, uh, give me a random name. I'm trying to remember like, training camp darlings right now. Oh my point. gosh. But it, it, George Pickens was one for sure. Yeah, he was. He was he a was. huge one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco was one, but he actually panned out, which was rare, right. but that's an right. Andy Reid running back room result right there. <laughs> uh, but a lot of times you have these guys in training camp where you end up with these headlines. And Zamir White was a big training camp darling uh, his rookie multiple year. years ago. His rookie no, year. No, he wasn't even a training camp year. darling. He was, he was a, a Hall of Fame, Fame game, game darling, darling because they yeah. didn't play Jacobs <laughs> and people were freaking out about it on Twitter. Yeah, the the point is you're going to see more and more increases in value for these rookies as we get deeper and deeper into July and even August. So what's the point of us showing you all this ADP for first round assets specifically over the last four years? It's to tell you that not all of them hit. And when you are a future value or a hard rebuild team, this is really important information to know. And a good reminder for even us, we have teams where we are future, re- future values or hard rebuilds. And we get really, really excited about the rookies and their value upside, because honestly, admittedly, a lot of them have significant value upside and aren't being valued at their, at their value ceiling. In our opinion, case in point, Drake may, right? Yeah. And I think it's really, really important to realize that down the road, even though a decent amount of these guys maintained their value going from year one to year two, 
most of them end up not having a super successful long-term NFL career and ultimately don't have a ton of dynasty value for you. So if you think that your team is set because you had five first round rookie picks this year as a future value team, and you're going to sit with those rookies and you're going to hold them and hope that they increase in value as the season progresses. I would think again, here's, here's something that you need to know. Blueprints. We do blueprints all the time. Okay. We give a ton of feedback to people on a daily basis and you can, you can get one of those team blueprints over at flockfantasy.com slash domain. What we do with those team blueprints is when we analyze future value teams and we analyze hard rebuilds, again, most of them have these types of assets, a ton of young rookie assets. I cannot tell you how many of these types of teams have five or more rookies in their starting lineup heading into from the first round from the first, from the first round to the early second. Yes. One of the main things that I'm recommending to every single one of these team archetype builds is to diversify the risk, spread out your value, right? So what's the number one rule for a lot of um, hard rebuild teams? The first rule is the down tier, right? If you have any guys of significant value, any top cornerstones that have reached their value ceiling, you want to down tier from them and get value upside. There is a lot of value upside in rookies, but if all of your value upside is in rookies, you're automatically at a disadvantage because you're not diversifying between rookie assets and proven assets. Proven assets can still have value upside. They do have value upside. I mean, the rule that you're referring to is get rid of any players that aren't going to increase in value over the next year. And you don't know with rookies. Rookies could increase in value. And at, at some point, you know, they are a very good person to have on your rookie. I mean, like, for example, Rishi Rice, great person last year to have on your team because he increased in value so much. A good example of somebody from last year that wasn't a good person to have on your team was Bryce Young, because if you're taking him in a startup draft, you're taking him in the second round last year, or if you're taking him in rookie drafts, you're taking him at the 102, 103 last year, and now he's lost four rounds of value. So it's not always a good thing where, you know, with veterans, with with proven or young players, young assets, a lot of times you're like, I have a fairly good idea what their value is going to do. Um, with rookies, you don't know. They're wild cards. They're wild cards for a reason. Uh, the best way to know, obviously, if you have too many rookies on your team or or what your team goal should be or how much diversification you should do uh, is to get a team blueprint. You can get a team blueprint at flockfantasy.com slash domain. When you sign up for the annual mother flocker tier, you get a free one or you can buy them no matter who you are, no matter where you live, Ooh. no matter where you're from, no what? matter who your mom is. So you can buy oh, that's that a big one. link down below. Uh, you can just go and buy them from the site. Now we have those for sale. We have blueprints with live reviews for sale now. So you live stream live blueprints. And we also have blueprints mm. with one-on-one meetings available for Heck sale. Yeah. Now. So, so if you want one of those, like I said, the links are down in the description and we'd love to tell you your team archetype and which rookies, if any, should you be moving off of? Cause this is important because like I said, you don't know if rookies are going to increase in value or decrease in value. What you do know and what we recommend before we say recommending young players, because a lot of people look at hard rebuilds, they look at productive struggles and they say, okay, I'm going to draft only young players. Young players are not guaranteed to increase in value. Rookie picks are guaranteed to increase in value. Right. And one of your best indicators on if you should be making a move off of a rookie as a future value or hard rebuild team specifically is that hype time of training camp in August. So we want you to be really attentive for the next month, honestly, because Again, what it, the, some of the data that we've presented in the offseason has been that rookie wide receivers maintain their value going into their second year more than any other position, specifically first round wide receivers. I think it's like 70 to 75 percent maintain their value going into their second season, dating all the way back to like 20. 20- 14, I believe. Damian Pierce was a training camp darling. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah he's he, a good example of somebody was. who did gain temporary yeah. value and right. then completely lost it all. Right. So yeah. again, with those guys that are you have in the training camp and, and going through these different scenarios, a lot of times you don't sell them. So we're not telling you, hey, sell your, when they get hype, sell them. Because if it comes out of camp that Roma Dunze is having a good camp, well, no crap, he's having a good camp. He's a he's, good wide receiver. He, yeah. You're holding yep. Romo Dunze, but you're also holding him be- not because he's, you know, he's somebody that's like, oh, he's a my guy. You're doing it because he plays wide receiver. And Nathan mentioned it. Wide receiver holds their value better than almost any rookie position. It typically goes like this wide receiver, quarterback, then tight end. And those three are honestly tight end is not that far from quarterback. You could probably do wide receiver, quarterback and tight end and then running back in terms of holding and maintaining your value in terms of running back. I mean, that value is so all over the place that you could completely lose your value as a running back, but get it all back the next offseason because you have an opportunity open up or something like that. Yeah. Like see Zamir White. Yeah. Zamir White was a training camp darling. He was really, really hyped and really, really sought after. And then everybody's like, oh yeah, Josh Jacobs. He actually is playing and believe it or not, the Hall of Fame game is not indicative <laughs> of what's going to happen on the field in an NFL season. Yeah. Uh, and then now there's 
there's an opportunity for Zamir White and he's gone right back up. And so if you if you held Zamir White, if you would have sold Zamir White after the hype that came along with the Hall of Fame game, which was real, I, I have the Twitter receipts to prove it, guys. I'm not I am not exaggerating this. It was bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you sold him then, you took a value win because he really didn't gain any value until now. And even now the value he has is not much higher than where he was. I, he was really, really hyped there for a minute. So Yeah, and I'll I'll do you one better here too. Like what is the point of a future value team. What is the point of a team that is not currently contending that is looking to eventually contend a year from now going into 2025 value accumulation. If your current value maintains going into 2024 or going into 2025, are you any closer to contending? Not necessarily. You have a little bit more experience with your rookies no longer being rookies, and maybe some of them ended up being productive. But again, the point here is to diversify. T. Higgins is a marvelous example of this. And by marvelous, I mean multiple M's at the beginning of marvelous, because the way I said it was like multiple marveluses. And T. Higgins is a guy that, no, his situation isn't going to look different this year, but... He did have a down year and struggle with injury last season, but we know that he gets, when he plays an entire season, about 110 targets and over 1,000 yards with Joe Burrow. Typically. What do we know is going to happen to T. Higgins in 2025? He's going to go to a different team, team, most likely because they can't pay multiple wide receivers and top dollar to a quarterback, and he will be in a position to be the wide receiver one and get a fresh start somewhere else. That's how you accumulate value because we know that he's not only safe and not only going to maintain throughout the year, but we know that a contract is incoming. Wide receivers heading into contract years are some of not only the safest, but highest value upside assets to invest in when you are a team that is currently rebuilding. Prove it years. I mean, we just saw it with Pittman. Well, we just saw it. We we just just saw it with Nico Collins. Nico Collins. I mean... Again, like, uh, let's give a practical example of how to diver- diversify with a bunch of rookies here. So all of these rookies are in the same range. J.J. McCarthy, Jonathan Brooks, Brian Thomas, Lad McConkey, and Xavier Worthy. Say you have all five of those rookies on your team. There are a lot of people that do. A lot of people, they do a really good job at the invest in rookie picks part because they're going to go up in value. And then they make all their rookie picks. Because a lot of times you're not getting value wins in your trades in the draft. Yeah, they did then make your rookie picks because you've got from the rookie draft to the start of the NFL season and into the NFL season to trade those rookies. But if you've got in on one team, McCarthy, Brooks, Thomas Jr., McConkey, and Worthy, I'm pivoting off of two of those guys at least. Here's a practical example of guys I'd pivot to. Hawkinson. McCarthy, I would probably keep. Jonathan Brooks, he's rare because he's he is a running back that I actually like in a bare landscape, but let's talk about worthy McConkie and Brian Thomas jr. If I have for those five rookies and those three receivers, there's no way I'm keeping all those guys. No. There's no way. In fact, mm-hmm. I'd pivot from Xavier worthy to Bryce young right now value adjacent right here on these community rankings. on keep Drake cut value adjacent. I could even talk about moving from Brian Thomas jr. To Jackson's with Jigba three spots apart, but I want a mix of those guys. I want JJ McCarthy, Jonathan Brooks, JSN, Bryce Young, and then maybe Xavier Worthy. And if you're looking for an elite tight end upside guy there, you're getting TJ Hawkinson, who everyone knows for a fact is going at a value discount right now just because he's going to be injured for the first, who knows how long, at beginning of the season, exactly. you know which the value we don't even know stunner. how long it's actually going to be. Everyone's just assuming that it's going to be super long, even though we haven't heard anything. But the point is not to, to move off of rookies uh, before they play. The point is not, hey, as soon as they get training camp hype, you got to move off these rookies. The point is, if you have too many rookies, well, let's define too many rookies. In a 12-team league, start 10, how many rookies from the first round this last year is too many rookies? Five? Four. I I would even say four can be a little too much. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) when you're you're just playing the... the, 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 the funny thing about this is people get so antsy about their players. You can use rookies to down tier into a future first for next year yes. and other players. Yeah. I mean, let's take a look. If, For example, if you were to down tier from Brian Thomas Jr., like, hey, I've got 14 rookie wide receivers on my team. I can't do this anymore. Okay, well, let's look. Who are we going to down tier? Next? Let's even go to the next page here because if we want to get like a 25, let's say we want a 25 first on top. So let's go down and look for some good assets you can put on top of a 25 first. I don't know if people would do Polk, but they're separated by a round. But that's a good example of somebody you target. Um, Going down even more here, Josh Downs. Josh Downs is worthless right now. Yep. Um, Jermaine Burton. I mean, these are all guys that, you know, 
they're like Jermaine Burton is a rookie himself, but if you're getting a first on top, you're insulating the value with the rookie wide yes. receiver, and you're also shooting for upside. So, yep. so that in particular is a fair, a fairly good move. But again, it's not sell your rookies. It's not sell some of your rookies. It's look at your portfolio as a whole. Look at your value portfolio. It's the same thing. Like if you do any investing, it's the same thing when you look at your portfolio of like what you have your money invested in. It's like you've got it's going to show you the, the pie chart, right? You've got blank invested in this. You've got blank invested in that. You've got this and this, whatever. And, and it shows you how your assets are being diversified in your portfolio because diversification in investment is one of the most important things mathematically to ensure that you actually turn yes. a profit. Yep, it's it is a mathematical concept. That I had to take in all of my 400 level stats class. I had a stu- I, it was <laughs> nailed in my brain that it was, and so it's less about hey, w- do you have rookies? Sell them. It's all about spreading it, out your it's, value. It's all about how much of my value portfolio is rookies. If that piece of the pie is too big, then we're going to spread it out and we're going to get to some other areas so that our value portfolio as a whole, moving into the next year, can increase in value. That's what this is about. So let us know again, if you would like us to look at your team and tell you, Hey, like you've got too many rookies on this team, or this is the right amount of rookies or on this team, you need more rookies. Maybe flockfantasy.com slash domain and link is in the description as well. If you want to just buy a team review without becoming a member. However, I would recommend just becoming an annual member because it's way more bang for your buck. You get the trade calculator, you get the rankings, you get the, my teams page, which is new and improved. Not to mention a ton of new updates coming to the site here in the next couple of months. So it's going to be freaking excited. awesome. Like, actually we are pumped for it so yeah. you should join now while you can and get a free blueprint when you have the annual motherfucker you have to use code domain when you do that but we appreciate you guys watching thanks for joining us today and we'll see you later